And here we are. It's patchy. It's just not my skin color and it's just too much. <laughs> What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's look is questionable, okay? So obviously I'm not matching, but today's video is gonna be all about technique of what I used to do before with my makeup and what I do now with my makeup. Seven different techniques that have changed my makeup game and made my makeup look so beautiful and way more flawless. If you guys wanna see how I went from this to this, then stay tuned. All right, let's get started, you guys. So I'm gonna just kind of rush through some of the steps and then really focus on what I'm trying to show you guys. So anyway, we're getting into our Tatcha primer. I'm just using a little bit of this in my T-zone because y'all know my T-zone be cutting up my skin. Oh, well, uh, granted, I did my cycle. <laughs> my cycle returned. Okay, the cycle continued, and I'm struggling right now, but it's fine. I have such bad hormonal breakouts. It's and when I say bad, it's bad for me. It may not be bad for you guys. You might think, oh my God, you look great. Look at me. I'm like, I get it. But for me, this is this, this ain't right. This is not. Okay, let's spot conceal real quick before we get into the base, the real, the real base. So I'm using my e.l.f. concealer. I will be using this for my under eyes as well. So this will be making another appearance, but the skin, it's just doing too much. I need to handle it. I'm actually gonna go back to a method that I used to do for a while and I just, you know, we switch it up all the time. So I'm gonna be doing concealer first. Who is she? <laughs> and I'm gonna be using my e.l.f. concealer that I just used. So if you guys don't know, this is the Hydrating Camel Concealer in the color Light Beige. And we about to get these under eyes for real, for real. I have an older complexion video of me doing this specific technique. If you guys wanna check it out, you sure can, okay? I'm gonna also add my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and Cafe Con Leche because the formula is just amazing. I absolutely love it. Now I'm gonna be getting into a dry sponge. This is from June & Co. And we're gonna just start by blending out our concealer. So my concealer is done. Again, I'm focusing on techniques, so the way you do your makeup and begin your base and all of that jazz is up to you. It is really not that big of a deal, so I kind of switched it up and did a different method, but everything I'm about to show you is still relevant and still applies to how I'm doing my makeup. And I also want to make sure that you guys know there is no right or wrong way to do your makeup. You do your makeup the way you want to do your makeup and what makes you feel the best and makes you feel happy and allows you to be creative and all the things that people enjoy about makeup artistry there's no rules to it but what I want to show you is techniques that I have learned from watching other people and just seeing what's on social media that I apply to my routine that I actually really enjoyed and I feel like it really enhanced and leveled up my skill first thing I want to talk about is cream contour you guys know I love a cream contour it's one of my favorite things about makeup so I prefer to cream contour because I feel like powder contour can get really messy when you do cream you have a little bit more freedom to be messy and clean it up because once you set that's it and when you use powder you mess up that's it okay there's no going back so I love a cream contour and I feel like it just looks a little bit more flawless under the skin versus over. So let's just get into it. You guys know I love cream bronzer, especially the one from Fenty. It's just absolutely great. So if you haven't seen her or used her, you need to, but we're gonna get into her. This is the shade Teddy. And I'm going to explain to you what I love about cream bronzer and why I love to use it in the way that I use it. Before I actually show you guys my new technique, I wanna show you guys what I was doing before because there's a big difference in my opinion and I wanna show you what I mean and why I really like the technique that I'm doing now. So before, I would take my cream bronzer and here I am, okay? And then I would bring it down, but I would bring it right on top of the jaw that's what I would do before. So my thought process was I noticed that most people put their bronzer here, so that's what I did. I didn't really just, I didn't know the placement for myself, so I just put it there. 
and I used bronzer to contour. And I also wanted to contour my jaw, but I thought putting bronzer on top of my jaw was the solution to contour my jaw. Now let me explain and show you how I use my cream bronzer now. Taking a little bit of the bronzer, I'm going to start placing it above where I would typically contour and sculpt. I've shared this in many videos, but I believe bronzer is really for saturation and bringing warmth to the skin. It's not really meant to contour, granted you could do it ever you want. My philosophy with bronzer is it's meant to bring warmth to the skin. So I place it above and I just use a little, just like that. So can you see the difference? This is super heavy, this is very light, and it just looks more natural. I go on my forehead, and I didn't really change much about my forehead, but that is it. That's what I use bronzer for. I don't take bronzer and use it under my chin, okay? I don't use it to create definition or to sculpt. I use it to bring warmth to the skin. To sculpt, I'm going to use my Vanity Makeup Sculpt and Glow Trio, and this is where I'll begin to create shadow and an illusion that my face is more snatched, more put together and try to disguise some of the issues that I got going on. And I'm gonna be using a contour shade. I also love the Huda Beauty Tantor Cream, you guys know that. So whatever, is, you know, whatever you got, whatever you like to use. You wanna use something that's more on the cool side of the spectrum, that way you can create and cast a shadow on your face. That way it just looks a little bit more natural. Taking a little bit of the product, this is the shade Medium, just so you guys know. I'm going to begin by placing this right here, like right above my ear and going inwards, but I don't bring it too far in. I wanna keep the definition right here. And I don't wanna get past my eye because then that looks a little unnatural to me. I don't ever see people's cheeks defined inward like this, you know? You really see the definition right here. Using the same cream, I'm going to then go underneath my jaw and sculpt. Bring it on the side, underneath, hit my chin, then blend it. Now, do you guys see the difference? Here we are. Here we're not. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying. Now I'm gonna move on to foundation. I'm gonna be using my Tom Ford Waterproof Foundation Concealer slash concealer. Oh, I didn't even know this was concealer. I'm just gonna use this foundation, okay? <laughs> this is the shade Tawny. Granted, my breakouts are on this side, but I feel like this side looks so much better than this side. Can you guys tell? I hope so. <laughs> I'm gonna move into powder and this is another technique that I wanna get into and it just makes so much more logical sense to me. So I'm gonna show you what I did before and then I'll show you what I do after. I would dip a sponge into my powder and just set. Typical, right? No big deal, it doesn't seem like so, you know what I mean? Like I would just use a lot of powder and just bake and set at the same time and boom, you know? Like no big deal. And I would do the same thing underneath. And I would make sure to bring it all the way to my corner of my lip. No big deal. That's kind of just what it is. Granted, you can still do this. It's not a problem. But I'm gonna show you what I have learned that I think is really great on my skin and I just love the look of it. Using the same powder, I'm gonna be taking a brush like this. This is like a setting brush. This is from the It's My Ray Ray Collection number four brush. And I'm going to go ahead and set my under eye with a light layer first. And then I'm gonna go into that same sponge that I use on this side to bake, but I'm using way less powder. And then when I go underneath my contour, I only bring it far enough to where it's hitting like my eyebrow. And then I just kinda, you know, set everything that wasn't set, but I keep the concentrated area right here. 
but do you guys see where I'm getting at? So this obviously looks way different than this side. It's a lot more heavier. So then I would let this sit slightly and then I'll brush it off and I'll show you guys the difference. I just think this looks so much better. It looks softer. It doesn't look as harsh. It looks more natural. This is obviously very harsh. Um, there's no reason why you should be bringing this outward in my opinion. Once it gets past here, I feel like it's just not very natural. When do you see someone's face actually sculpted like that without makeup? You just don't. So I was like, you know what? Mm. And then on top of that, I was using so much powder on this side and I just was like, why? Why am I using that much powder? Once you set like the first and second layer, in my opinion, those other layers of powder aren't doing anything. Um, your technique is your technique, and if it makes your skin and your face and your makeup look super good and you're just feeling confident, I support it 100%. This is kind of what I've learned for myself, which is why I wanted to show you guys. But in my opinion, I think this side looks better. We're gonna talk a little bit about technique with the eyes and just kind of accentuating and, you know, enhancing your eye shape. Everybody has a different eye shape, so this may not work out for you, but if your eyes are similar to mine and I'll kind of explain it a little bit, then, you know, this technique may be great for you. So my eye shape, I have big eyes, got a lot of real estate up here, okay, my lids is, you know, great for eyeshadow. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time looking at my eyes, okay, most of us have. I noticed that my eyes actually kind of turned downward, not very much, but enough to where I noticed that I like that lifted look, so I need to enhance my eyes using certain techniques to get my eyes to look more lifted. So let me show you what I was doing before and not paying attention to my eye shape, just throwing color on my lid. And the eyeshadow palette that I'm using, by the way, is the e.l.f. Retro Paradise eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna be using the shade Dijon, getting into her. I'm just going to start blending, and I was so just like, throw color on my lid. No, like, no technique to it. I'm just throwing color on. I was very fast, just, here we go. Now I'm gonna get into Sandy Bum, and I'm going to, Apply that into my crease. Now I'm gonna go into the shade Keiko, I believe that's what it's called, and put that right in the crease as well. I'm gonna get into the spoiled eyeshadow, and I can't pronounce it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it in the description bar like I do. But yeah, it's like a little pearly shimmer eyeshadow, and I'm just gonna place this on my lid. And then I'm gonna get into my under eye and take Sandy Bum and just you know, put some shadow there. Nothing wrong with this eyeshadow, it looks great. But as I was looking at my eyes and kind of what I wanted to see more out of my makeup, I decided, hmm, I need to switch this up a little bit. Let's get into the new technique of what I like to do with my eyeshadow. And I'm gonna be taking the shade Dijon from the same palette. Okay, I'm using the same colors. And I'm gonna begin my transition, but I'm going to make sure that I'm just not doing all that. I'm going to take my time, blend, and blend inward and blend outward and make sure that it's blending seamlessly everywhere. Now I'm gonna get into Sandy Bum. And I'm going to begin by putting this color on the outer corner of my eye and blending it outwards and into my crease. Now using the shade Keiko in an angled brush, I'm going to place this on my lash line and create a wing, but this wing isn't gonna be defined, it's gonna be blended out. Then going back into that MAC eyeshadow, I'm going to just use my finger and place that color on the lid, but I'm gonna keep it more inward and not put it all over my lid. Taking Sandy Bum in the same pencil, and I'm going to do the bottom lash. And here we are, we have two different looks using the same shadow, but it really was just technique and where I placed the shadow. So I learned that I really wanna emphasize the outer corner of my eye and always lift that with my eyeshadows. So I stopped doing this. Granted, it's beautiful, it's so great, and it probably works for so many different eye shapes, but my desire is a lifted look, so I decided to just change it up, you know, and go with more of a lifted cat eye effect, which I prefer. So here we are. 
here we're not. <laughs> I have mascara on and now let's get into our lashes. I'm gonna be using Lily Lashes. This is their new cute collection. I love the packaging, but this is the Miami Flare Lash. And this is a lash that's really wispy and beautiful and kind of light, but still drama. You know, it's in between, but this is the Flare Lash. So it actually has more of a longer lash at the end versus short, long, then short, you know what I'm talking about? So this is going to give me that cat eye lifted effect. I'm gonna show you how I've applied them before and then I'm gonna show you what I do now to make it look even better. My House of Lashes glue, this is a glue that I just love. It's great, you can use whatever you got. It's more about how I place the lashes. So now that this is dried down enough for me to apply the lash, I'm gonna show you exactly what I used to do. So hopefully you can see this pretty well, but I would just go ahead and apply the lash. And basically, I am following my lash line. This is very typical. The technique is not bad at all. This is your standard way of doing lashes and it works. And I'm just making sure that all areas, the inner corner, the middle, and the outer corner are all just pressed right into my lash line. They're not sitting on my lashes, but very, very close to my lashes. The new technique that I do with my lashes now is I take a eyelash curler like this and I just place my lash inside and make sure that it's lined up evenly. You know, I don't wanna curl crookedly. And then I just curl it. <laughs> I have my lash, it's curled the way I want it to curl. I apply my lash glue. Now that she is dried down pretty well but still sticky, I go ahead and apply and I apply, you know, just straight on. So instead of lining my lash band to the lash line of my lashes, I'm going to place it a little bit higher. And then I go ahead and pinch my lashes to the outer corner. That way it can kind of fill the gap that would be in between my lashes and then where I set the lash at the end, if that makes any sense, <laughs> if you're still following along. And basically what that just did was lift my eye upward and just create more of that desired angled cat eye look versus this side. Can you tell? <laughs> we're almost done we have three more steps to complete the technique video for you guys the next step is going to be bronzer and I'm going to show you exactly what I did with powder bronzers that I am just cringing at but you guys need to know okay so I'm going to be using a bronzer from MAC this is from their bronze collection and this is the shade totally topeless it's a matte bronzer which I prefer I prefer for a really long time and what I would really do because I wanted my face to be bronze and sculpted as I dip my brush into the bronzer and I just began building up my bronze. And bringing it this way. And here we are, it's patchy, it's just not my skin color and it's just too much. I'm not trying to offend anyone by saying that. For me, it just doesn't look right. Now let me show you what I do now. Okay, it's basically the same thing with the cream bronzer, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. I'm gonna take a different shade using the MAC Bronze Collection, and this is called Beijing Beauty. It's a little bit more of a yellow-based bronzer, and I'm gonna lightly tap a brush into the color, and then I'm going to tap my bronzer, but I'm going to keep it where? Above my cheekbone, not underneath. And I am just lightly pressing bronzer on. And the reason why I'm lightly doing it is because, well, I already have bronzer. So why am I just going to keep packing bronzer? It just doesn't make any sense. I'm just gonna lightly enhance it, slightly, and that's it. Boom. Here we have a just light flush of bronzer, no big deal. And here we have this mess, okay? I can't even believe it. It just makes me cringe so bad because I was in these streets like this. <laughs> I love blush. I hope you guys love blush as much as I do because I'm about to show you guys exactly what I used to do and I'm going to show you what I do now. I'm going to be using my Jouer palette and this is the shade Kiss Me right here. Just a beautiful pink shade and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to show you guys what I did before. Can't stand it but I would put blush right here. You can do it just like this, it's not a problem. But for me, I just was like, mm, I can do this a little bit more of a flattering way for my face type. 
Instead, I'm going to focus my blush right on the apples of my cheeks and even blend that higher up into my under eye and then blend it a little bit into the bronzer. I feel like this looks more youthful, it looks more natural. You know where it's at, but it just doesn't look like blush here. It blends into everything, it just looks really good. Where this side, I feel like you know. She put blush right here and why? I don't know. The last step we're gonna get into is highlighter. And I'm excited to show you guys because highlight has definitely changed for me in so many different ways. So let me show you what I used to do. I'm gonna be using my Milk Makeup Highlighter. Um, this is the Flex Highlighter in Iced. I'm gonna be taking some of that product on just a small little highlighting brush. And I am going to begin highlighting. Now, I think a lot of us deal with this problem and they think that there's no such thing as too much glow, but babe, there is. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I used to do. Oh God. Here she is. Granted, my breakouts are kind of making this look worse, but this is still not flattering for me at least. So let me show you what I do now. I'm gonna use the same brush, the same highlighter. I'm gonna begin to apply, but I'm gonna apply right here. This is the peak of my cheekbone. And I began to notice that when I was looking, like where is the peak? Where does it like come out the most? That's where I need to emphasize. And it's right here. It's not here, it's here. I'm just going to blend. And that is it for my highlight. I don't want it to be super beaming. I don't want it to be in your face. I don't want to be seen from outer space. I want it to be super subtle. I want to look like I have just a radiant glow and nothing crazy like this. So let's compare sides. This is the new. This is the old. <laughs> I would bring my highlighter all the way in and I would emphasize pores and texture. And now I'll just keep it in this area. Granted, sometimes I do have texture in this area, but you know, it goes away. My pores ain't going away, the things is here. So anyway, that is how I do my highlighter. I'm gonna throw on a lip color real quick and I'm just gonna show you guys the exact look before and after. Okay, here we are with the finished look. So as you guys can see, we have the old and we have the new, granted, there's texture and scarring and all the extra things, but I still think this side looks way better than this side. That is just my opinion. That's what I'm really into right now. But you never know, next year I might really like this again. Who knows? But right now I'm really digging this side of the makeup. It looks really good. I think it flatters my face and the desire that I want, which is more of an angle, which is more soft and natural, but still, you know, shaped and sculpted. If you guys like this video, please let me know. Um, if you guys use these tips and tricks, again, let me know in the comments. And of course, subscribe because I'll be rolling out more of these videos for you guys. And yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my face because I can't be in the streets like this. Okay, I need to fix this up. But this was fun. I'm glad I was able to show you guys some of these tips and tricks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye.